What's up, friends of the good boot? This is Manny, and welcome to a new guide video right here. War about skill training with Manny. 20 tips and tricks, okay? And again, it's been so long since I've made the last guide or so that I thought it's finally time to do this again. And uh, for this, I'm using the skirmish that we recently had. This skirmish right here. Why am I using a skirmish for the guide video? It's easy because everyone has the same level gear. People cannot say, well, your gear was le more leveled than his gear, or his robot was better than mine, or his, or yours. None of that. Everyone has the exact same hangar right here, and it was this hangar right there. So, which leads me to my first point. Well, number one, know your robots. Know their strength, know their weakness. Knowing that the Cerberus is one of the strongest one-on-one -on -one robots in this lineup makes me want to start with a Cerberus. Most people don't get along with a Cerberus so well because it is fragile, it gets killed easily, but that thing is very powerful in one on one So I decide to go with a Cerberus, but of course you also need to know all your other robots too. You need to know the abilities, the timers, you need to know the strength and weakness, when you have resistance, when you don't. You also need to consider maps for your hangar. If your hangar is a certain kind of layout, it might be that you're better off trying a certain game mode because Team Deathmatch, for example, a game mode where you have more long base distances, where you can isolate players a little bit easier and you have the full 10 minutes of time mo often to play all the robots. So you get to play more. Beacon Rush, sometimes after two robots, it's over and you really need fast, strong brawlers for it, you know? So knowing your robots, knowing the strength and weakness of them and also and that's the thing, knowing where they have to be, you know, used, in what setting, that allows you to really maximize the potential. If you drop the wrong robot at the wrong position, at the wrong, you know, against the wrong type of enemies, you might just end up dying and you couldn't do a thing, right? So, second thing, and yes, this is gonna become a little longer video, second thing is map awareness. Um, I'm hoping you guys are okay with me stopping from time to time, giving you tips and tricks, my thoughts, because this is a guide video and I want to make you guys out there the strongest players uh, on the battlefield. But first, ladies and gentlemen, have you already seen on the other channel called Paramotor Money, where I fly this thing right here, how I did a crazy maneuver with a friend where our both wings touched themselves at the wingtip. That's what I call the bro fist. It's quite a bit of a dangerous maneuver and if you find yourself slightly interested in this, then uh, check out the video in the upper right corner, ladies and gentlemen, and give this thing a, t a try, and maybe follow the channel if you like the content, and uh, thanks for your attention. Map awareness is extremely important. You need to observe, you need to scout where the enemies are. I'm going back for a second. And you need to, and, and by doing this, you know what robots they have, you probably know what abilities they have and how you counter them, and you know where you can fight without getting outnumbered, because the next part, number three, is um, know your ability timers and then we have don't get outnumbered, okay? Knowing ability timers, for example, here means that I retreat now because this guy's weapons are suppressed, but only for five seconds. After those five seconds, he does much more damage to me. So I, mo I move away and uh, exactly at the time I know his weapons start to deal the full damage again. And then coming out with another ability charge, suppressing the guy again, and getting him really good. And then part number four, don't get outnumbered. This is a mistake I did right here. I did not see this guy coming in. So my web map awareness, although really well, I missed this. This guy kind of got into my blind spot for a second. And I was a little bit surprised that he came out of the corner in the moment he did. And so I got some additional damage. Damage that I could have avoided um, um, if, if I hadn't just been getting outnumbered. Generally, never be outnumbered by your enemy. Whenever you can make it so, draw them into a one-on-one. -on -one. Bait their abilities and try and get them when they are most vulnerable in a one-on-one, -on -one, okay? And only with the strongest meta bots you can you can go into two on ones, maybe three on ones with a Ravana or something like this. But usually, if you try to maximize the best out of your abilities and play the cards you have been given the best, try not to get into two on ones. Five. Assume every enemy is dangerous. Assume they're all max level. They are very skilled players because this way, you rather be surprised the other way around. 
don't let them surprise you with how good or how strong they are because that means you have approached the situation wrong you've already judged them in weaker than they are and you're probably being surprised and outplayed right assume the worst assume they're the strongest and max level and assume they know exactly what's going on and rather let yourself be surprised that they are not that strong because that one you can handle <laughs> number six corner shooting is free damage free damage is always good whether you run a nemesis and you run out and fire a couple of rockets at a robot behind your invincible shield or whether it is to corner shoot free damage is always good try to use free damage whenever to and whenever you can and corner shoot at the enemy whenever you can he is a much stronger brawler but i'm killing him no problem because i do free damage to him and um yeah, that is really, really important. Uh, corner shooting. Uh, but there's one occasion where you cannot corner shoot. The occasion where you cannot corner shoot is when the enemy has splash damage. So, for example, flamethrowers or freezing rockets or rockets of any kind. There, don't corner shoot because he's going to be able to hit you. Seven, provoke enemy abilities whenever you can, okay? I was trying to do this here. I was trying to bait him into his ability use because he's locked down and if his ability was used i could just walk around the corner and his ability is not uh, useless unfortunately he was a good player and he he knew that i'm trying to bait his ability and he didn't do it right now tip mom number eight shields can block some abilities for example this robot we're using right now the cerberus with the right weapon shoulder shot it can lock you down and suppress you it also adds corrosion damage, but that's so marginal that doesn't matter. It locks and suppresses you. But against another Cerberus, against Aegis shields, for example, it doesn't go through. However, the blue shields will let the ability through. Okay, so knowing the shields and what shields block which attacks allows you to do what I do right here. Look, he's full. I'm almost killed. I already lost my heavy weapon. I'm really in a bad spot right now. But I know I have to drain his shield first and then hit him with the, with the ability because that's when I hit him hard and when he's vulnerable. So his shield is down and then I hit him with a charge. He's suppressed. He's locked. And despite my low HP, I almost get to kill the whole dude. If I had my heavy weapon in the middle, I would have killed him. Uh, the only reason I didn't is I, had, I was way too low. Tip number nine, knowing counters. I, I had a lot of different options to, cho to choose now to spawn with. The worst one would have been the behemoth. Because the behemoth is not going to catch uh, the, uh, the nemesis. The nemesis is faster, the nemesis has the invincibility shield and is going to outbrawl me. The um, but the uh, invader is invader is a really good counter because I can jump onto the nemesis, so he cannot evade me, he cannot dodge me or run away from me. I can jump and catch him no matter what. Something I don't have to do with nemesis or Fenrir because they are both slower or the same speed as the other guy, right? And therefore it's hard to catch him. Not with the invader, so I choose the hard counter. That's what we call this in the game. Um, we call it the hard counter to choose the type of robot next that has the easiest time with your enemy. Why would you give him any freebies, right? And then jumping into his shield right here. This is something not even I pull this off all the time. I mean, this is something I always try, but it usually doesn't always work that well to try and jump into the enemy's shield. But this is what I meant. I can jump on him and he has no way to escape me. Uh, it, the only thing he has is the shield, but since I managed to jump into his shield, not even his shield is going to protect him here. Okay? So, what was that? Okay. Tip number eight, nine? You see, it's gonna be a longer video. We're gonna have a lot of tips and tricks, and I'm hoping... Although I expect many of you guys, some of that you probably know, Champions League player will probably know most of what I'm talking about right here. Uh, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you guys out there who can learn something from this. And that is my goal here. And if you like the content, ladies and gentlemen, and you want to stay tuned on more uh, and also giveaways, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet and ring that notification bell like you see on screen here. Um, it, uh, this video was a lot of work, but I hope it pays off and you guys enjoy that one here. So, uh, I've made a mistake here. I jumped here. I shouldn't have done that. I should have stayed away from him uh, and, re and had my full ability ready. But he is playing totally wrong. This is an example of someone not knowing uh, how to play the Fenrir, 
right? Because probably he never played a Fenrir before and he's in his first ever Fenrir now on the on the skirmish game mode. And he doesn't know that he has no resistance when he has the center weapon not active. So he has his shield is disabled because I shot it down. His he only uses two out of three weapons and his resistance, the most important part, is offline. He only gets his resistance when he activates the center weapon on the Fenrir. And I'm not trying to make fun of someone. I'm trying to educate here and trying to show what you could do better in the future, okay? Please don't get this as like insulting or making fun of somebody. That's not what I want to do here. I want to provide some 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 educa educational content that allows you to understand things a little bit better. And the Fenrir needs to activate his abilities. And what I wait for here, I'm waiting for him to do that because he has lock on. That is another tip I could have built in, I forgot this. Um, tip number 15, 11, whatever it is, abuse lock-ons of the enemy, right? We know that he needs to establish a lock-on, and when he activates his ability, what I do, I just jump over him. This way, he loses his lock-on, and I have him suppressed, and I am near and closer to him with the shotguns, and he basically notices now there is no more chance for him to win, because he has to turn around, he has to lock on first, and only then he's getting a chance. Next tip, scout your next enemy. Even when you're in battle with someone, already have the map awareness, as I told you in tip number two or three, um, and scout what's next, because you need to know, you must know what the next enemy is coming with, because that will allow you to counter him, to bait him, but you can only do this if you know what type of robots and abilities he has. I know there is another um, invader coming, okay? I already lost more health than he does, so I am in a disadvantage already. So let's try and turn this around. Do you think I can beat the same invader, the same exact robot with the same level stuff, despite me having a little bit lower HP? Noah set up strength and weakness and you can make it happen. I, I baited him to jump because I for, if, I, if he wanted to get me, he had to jump over the hill. And that's what I was counting on and it worked. Now, I know he has five seconds of resistance after jumping and landing. So I wait a little bit before I empty my entire clip on him. I suppress him, wait, 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 and then I give it everything I've got. Damage household is the name of the game here. We have a battle with two similar strong enemies. Always da dodge around and have the better damage household. He's going to jump again in a few seconds and I'm going to use this time to regenerate my abilities. Because look, I'm suppressed anyways. My weapons are red, I am suppressed. There is no point for me in firing my weapons right now. He's got resistance and I am suppressed. So what I do right here, I try to stay out of his reach and I regenerate my ammo. I just reload ammo as much as I can and not fire a single shot until his resistance is over. Then I land behind him, Bam, 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 bam. With all his resistance down, he takes tremendous damage. I had the fully loaded shots on my magazine and I just uh, didn't lose any damage household. I'm putting every damage that I can do in while he is not firing into my resistance, firing. Look, he's right now firing despite him being locked down. Next tip is dodge shots whenever you can. If you've got the aiming for it, you can counter your own movement because you know where you're going to walk. So if you walk to the right, you can already aim to the left to counter for this uh, move, for this, uh, you know, um, for, for the change of angle, right? Since you know where you go, you can already counter your own movement to your moving. And this is how you can always stay, stay aimed while you're dodging at the same time. But your enemy will not know what exact movement changes you will do, so he's going to move shots. Never stand still, always dodge. Always, no matter if a titan shoots you, if a short range brawler, no matter what, always dodge. Right? And this way you see this guy now losing a lot of his shots, boom, 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 three or four. That's almost an entire fully loaded magazine that he just wasted. And uh, by playing this style, again, I'm reloading all my weapons. I'm not interested in firing him, him with when I'm suppressed and when his resistance is up. Instead, I recharge and when I land and his resistance is gone, then I'm gonna hurt him big time. Right? And this is how I defeated, despite me having lower amounts of HP than he did, the same robot nearly taking only like 30% damage or 40%, right? And um, Damage Household is the name of the game again. 
And I think I need something to drink because my throat is getting dry. From all this talking, I'm sorry. Ugh, but I want to make this as, as, you know, as useful as possible for all you guys out there. Um, some of you guys out there, as I said, probably know all of that already. There's a good chance some of you guys all know all this. The high-end Champions League players, probably I can't teach you much anymore because you guys are also uh, already amazing. The, all, the only things I could teach you are like high-end things, quick switching, right? I didn't even end, add quick switching to this because I know it's hard to do on touch controls and most people won't be able to do this. Quick switch is when you run Scourge, for example, lock on weapons, and you fire at someone, and shortly before the guy dies, you switch target to the next guy. He will die, because the lag will still give him the damage, he dies, and you have already firing at the next guy without having to lock on for four seconds with lock on weapons. That's quick switching, very hard to pull off, I didn't enter, put it here. This is the kind of stuff I can even show uh, maybe the top end notch players of you guys out there, but uh, it's uh, very few. Um, here, I guess most of you, even the, even most of the good players would probably jump on the Nemesis. Judge yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Save abilities for the right time. When would you jump on this Nemesis? Let me show you what I do. He already had his ability. He already hit me with everything he's got. Except the Scourge. Why would I suppress him now? Right? I can hit him with the shotguns nearly perfectly. I'm waiting for his next shield. That's when I hit him. That's when I'm going to suppress him because his entire ability use is completely worthless now And he also lost the lock on because I jumped next and over to him So again all the previous tips are included in this making him lose his lock on you know Trying to dodge him and all this and then uh, saving the abilities for the right time Most people would have probably immediately jumped and then next sets as a few seconds later He would have hit you all the way with his rocket ability and I saved the ability for the time when his next rocket ability came, because I already missed the first one. Another tip for team. Let teammates help you. I have a behemoth and a Fenrir tank over there. I can't beat them with this little bit of HP. I'm too low on HP. But when they're distracted by my team, or when I have fire support from my team, then I can make it happen. Then I can work along with them. And outnumbering the enemy is always useful because both your teammates and you are going to take less damage while the enemy is going to take more. That makes kind of a 4 to 1 difference. Even just 2 on one -ing someone is like a 4 to 1 difference or so. Because double HP, double firepower versus half HP and half firepower. It's immense how this stacks up to each other. So, we won easily 2.8 million damage with the same hangar that everybody else had, right? This is important to mention here. And, um, and that's why I decided to go with the skirmish. Short ability cooldown versus long ability cooldown. I mean, this is something that I probably don't really have to make a tip for or a, a, a tips and tricks here. Uh, but you guys get what I mean, right? My ability cooldown on the, fen on the uh, Nemesis is much shorter than the one of the uh, jumping spider bot. So I abuse this as much as I can. Bringing in that shield as often as I can and just dealing damage whenever possible and trying to use that shield for free damage. Again, free damage is something you should always go for no matter what. Here I could have used the shield, but here comes the reminder, bait abilities. And I, I can't bait his ability if I use my shield here and fire at him. Then he will jump on me and hit me hard afterwards. I want to bait him to jump over the power plant and then let me have time to walk away from it and bring up my shield in return. So, that's what I'm trying to make him happen, to jump over the power plant and it works perfectly. It's like, it works all the time. Maybe I should have come, become a psycho, psycho, psychologist. What is the word for this? Uh... Um, yeah, a shrink. Maybe that's what I should have become because I can read people's minds so well. Uh, reminder, seek teammates, okay? I am fighting something that is way out of my league right now. Um, the only reason I can battle him is because he's missing lots of shots because I keep dodging and I was able to bait his ability. But in a one-on-one, -on -one, I would not really stand a chance against this spider bot right there. Seek teammates, outnumber the enemy, if possible. Set 16, wait for it, wait for it, now! That's especially very useful with uh, robots' abilities like the Pantheon Shields. Because the Pantheon Shields make your built-in weapons stronger when they block damage. 
but people know this, know this by now, so they will no longer fire at you when you have the Absorber Shield running, right? So activate that shield in the last possible split second. Maybe you already take one rocket damage, it doesn't matter. Just activate it to the last possible second and then bring it up. Because this way, you're gonna maximize that damage output of those built-in weapons to do double the damage than it would otherwise have done. And at the same time, you protect yourself with that shield for as long as humanly possible too, right? So, um, <laughs> wait for it, wait for it now! This is what I called this tip, I, uh, or tip a trick. I hope it's, <laughs> I hope it makes any sense at all from the name. Um, I have it from the Simpsons movie. So, here we go, having a, uh, a, a Fenrir coming in. I'm draining his shield, I'm waiting for it, and I'm ru running all the damage I can into him. And he didn't even have his ability ready because he wants to rush me, so he drops his ability. Now he activates his ability, his resistance is back up, but so is my free damage shield. And you see how much damage this guy is taking, holy moly. Again, he is normally more powerful than I am because it is a much stronger brawler with lots of HP and resistance. But look how much damage I can freely do while I pull him back into my team and get him killed. Boom. I should not have been able to kill him, but uh, I was able to. Next tip. Reload. Always fire empty your weapon. Why am I not showing this? I know it's gonna come. Maybe it's coming next. Um, reload. Whenever you can, a a approach the enemy with a fully loaded charge. Because uh, no matter if it's an Avenger or Scourge uh, or Tarans, you don't want to end up in a situation where, where you start a fight and after a salvo you notice, oh no, I'm empty, right? Tip number 18, more free damage. Well, I guess this is not really a, a new tip. I guess I was kind of cheating with this one here. Uh, but you get the drift, right? As often as I can, walk out, use shield, fire free damage, no matter what. I'm not taking any damage in return, so whatever I can do. Also, when enemies are occupied by your team, Come in, fire at them. Even if it's just for two or three seconds, it's worth it. It's free damage for you. And that means you get more silver at the end of the match. That means your team is more likely to win, which equals more silver. And it, uh, you know, all this. Like, there's a lot of important things. And level nine, and t tip number 19 might actually be one of the most important ones, ladies and gentlemen. Target priorities. This really is a high end tips and trick. This is something that's not easily explainable because there are so many situations where you have to switch. For example, most vulnerable is always the first priority. Falcon with ability active. The Fangs out ability on the Falcon means he doesn't have his resistance, means he's taking three times the damage. Focus him immediately. It's gonna be worth it for you and your team. Or the Leech without his ability. 90% less resistance. That's a quite a good convincing factor to attack him right there. Those are the targets. Second priority, most dangerous. What is most dangerous? Even if all abilities are there, what enemy do you go for? What enemy try do you try to provoke or bait his abilities? Ares, Aochun, Leech. Those are the most easy to bait abilities and most dangerous enemies you can take on. Blitz robots are harder to, harder to bait because they get super fast when they activate their abilities. So baiting them without getting caught by them is extremely unlikely. But it can work. Just know that first vul most vulnerable when resistance drop or abilities are gone, go for them. Second is most dangerous. Try and go for the things that are the most dangerous things. And second, or third, sorry, is the most damage possible. Where is no resistance? Right now, I'm going for um, for the one that I can hit best. Because the jumping invader, I will, I will not hit him with my rockets. I can do more damage to the still standing Fenrir. So I chose to go with the Fenrir here with the rocket launchers. But overall, the more interesting target would have been the spider. Because the spider doesn't have resistance. At least not now. And after it is so long after his jump. So this is the more interesting target, generally. But the Fenrir was something I could hit. Alright. And here we go with uh, the, my, my, again, favorite robot and the strongest one um, that can make the best difference. And I will be, I will probably be, a, surprise you a little bit with how much difference this, this flaming Cerberus can do on this, on this skirmish gameplay right here. We've already uh, locked down, suppressed and killed the spider bot. 
Okay. Now we're doing the same to the nemesis, and he's going. Get, he's getting killed because of the dot effect from the uh, from the uh, ability of the Cerberus. Firing, corner shooting, free damage, right? This shows basically what I do with the last part here. I'm showing and combining everything I've just shown you in one gameplay, all right? Trying to play team play, not exposing myself and letting myself get outnumbered. Um, trying to uh, apply decent target priorities. For example, these things that the behemoths can do a lot of damage, but they're very easily killed. So it is a vulnerable but dangerous robot and all the more reason to take it out real quick, right? And uh, here we are attacking with two uh, servos at the same time. Um, and I don't want to offer too much of a position to attack successfully. I rather bait the ability of the nemesis in the back. Meanwhile, the servos is doing a great job to the left. And then tip number 20, it's coming right here. Retreat, Re no, number 19, sorry. Retreat when you can. When you notice, oh my goodness, what the heck is going on? Two jumping invaders, two nemesis are here, uh, and we are only two guys. We have no chance here, and we're even going to get suppressed by the jumping invaders. There is no future in this encounter. The only option is to run. And don't be too proud for it. Run if this happens to you. Because now I can re regroup with my team, and not only that, I will be able to help my team. I locked down the invader right there, which means he cannot jump away. He got the entire salvo of my flamethrower to the face and got completely hit by it. And the next invader, he wants to jump between all of us. He wants to suppress this entire team of ours and then hit hard with his, with his team. But I locked him down and that's why he can't do any of that and he's getting killed by all four of us at the same time. Right? No chance for him. No, not even an a a ability to deal any point of damage whatsoever. Not even getting through our shield. And all this was possible now because I went back and regrouped with my team. Here, another Cerberus. Lock him down. He's the most dangerous but most vulnerable target. So I focus him with my ability. And I stick with my team the whole time. Right? Alright, so I'm skipping forward because for a long time the enemy has shifted the spawn now. They decided that it's enough, they have lost so hard on the other flank, so that they decided to spawn on the other side. Here, I was trying to bring down the shield before starting my lockdown shot. What I didn't see is that this other guy also had an Aegis shield up. So the other guy's Aegis shield blocked my uh, suppression. That was very unfortunate, but it's gonna happen. Another thing I need to tell you guys, it's normal to, de to get destroyed, okay? Don't feel like getting destroyed is something that only happens to those who are uh, not playing well. It, that's not the case. You get destroyed, it's part of the game. And sometimes it's worth taking trades. Sometimes it's worth getting destroyed and doing a very certain thing to the enemy in return, okay? And um, so getting destroyed is nothing bad and it is absolutely important to occupy people, to bring your hit points in and let them shoot you so that, you know, you activate your overdrive module or so that yet you take some strain off your friends next to you. And if I had gotten killed in the beginning against this 4 on 1 here, then all of what I'm doing right now I could not have done. I could not have helped this team in this, in most, in this very effective way uh, if I hadn't been able to pull this off. And, and survive, right, and regroup with them. They're still battling right now. There's three nemesis over fight, uh, fighting over there. I get this guy suppressed and locked, but unfortunately, you see, despite me locking him down, he still get he still got the kill. I even suppressed him, but he still got the kill. But I almost was able to save one of my teammates here, and from now on, uh, we're wanting, running a little bit, little, little bit, little bit, and then I'm gonna show you some sniper gameplay because that's also tip number twenty: is knowing spots and uh, where to expose yourself, right? There we go. That is, let me show you the stats screen real quick from the skirmish and then we're jumping into the last match 
Um, 2.4 million damage this time. Much more damage than anybody else has done. We haven't gotten all the kills, but that is not important. In a team-based game mode, it really doesn't matter much how many kills you get. Although, apparently, War Robots considers kills very important. Um, so it does matter, kind of, if you want to be, you know, getting the highest scores and highest rewards for each place. But... Overall, I think most of the time it's not that important and usually doing damage will get you the highest kill count too. Um, long range support playstyle. Knowing positions, knowing where to go, knowing your range, right? Knowing that you cannot attack somebody out of 500 meters range with the um, uh, uh, avalanche. And uh, hitting this guy who's shortly in 500 meters range, dealing tremendous amount of damage to him and really, 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 yeah being a bummer for him, man. He doesn't want that, man. He wanted to stay alive and do the best he can with this Cerberus, but turns out this Cerberus is done because I've dropped him so hard and now I can even help the uh, teammate against the other invader there. They did get the beacon nonetheless, uh, but they have lost two robots and we have lost zero. Well, actually, okay, they're still both alive, but they have almost <laughs> lost two robots. And we have only lost half a spider, or not even, right? Um, so this position right here, now I'm observing the other behemoth, and I'm like, okay, is he coming for me? And then I'm like, no, he can't. He's out of range. He can't shoot me. So I'm calm, cool, collective, and I go back to supporting, assisting my team. This is the playstyle of a long-range player. You're trying to assist teammates. You're not really the kind of guy who does the, who does the damage, usually, right? Normally, when you're running things like that, you're the kind of guy who who is a second line supporter and helping out big time from behind without exposing yourself and just trying to pull your weight by helping wherever it's possible. So I'm waiting here, you see this? The reason I'm not firing all the way is because the, the invader has resistance. You see the symbol right here. Why would I now choose to fire empty my weapon when in a few seconds he loses his entire resistance and I can do more damage, right? So I only fire as much as I reload, and then I unload completely once his resistance is gone. This way, it may not have done much of a difference, but it might have been a good 20% more damage on the enemy. And sometimes those 20% can be the deciding factor between a won and a lost battle. Alright. And tell me guys, by the way, what you think in the comment section about this video episode. I felt like doing another guide, a little tips and tricks video. Uh, and despite me knowing not everybody of you is going to make use of all those tips and tricks, because you probably know many of them already. I also think that some of you might not know, and uh, maybe it really helps you out. And this is my my um, motivating factor for this, for this video episode. Um, I really like doing them from time to time. And from what I gather, you guys also kind of really like guides, right? So here is a, um, a Fenrir coming in. I know he's not really doing a lot of damage at this range. The, look, the closer he gets, the more damage he will do to me. Um, but uh, yeah, since he is far away, I can currently just afford to sit back and, sh and shoot him with lots of firepower. But now I see all those um, Cerberus coming and you already saw they fired at me. I don't want to get locked down in front of so many enemies. So as soon as I see the Cerberus back there, I move away. And you see the shot of the, sh the lockdown shot? Did you hear it? Bam! That was a lockdown shot. It was very close. I almost got caught by it, but I in time I moved away. And this way, I'm not getting focused and killed now, but instead I can mu mu make use of my firepower to assist my team. If only the, that stupid little obstacle in my robot would be able to walk over it. So here we go. Activating the weapons and firing with everything you've got here at that enemy Cerberus. That's almost an entire Cerberus I'm killing right now. Let's correct that. That was an entire Cerberus. A very important target to kill and something that my team might have struggled with if I hadn't taken it out in advance, right? So there is a Fenrir without his resistance active. All right. I had to move up one meter. I literally had to move one meter to get back in range. Unbelievable. So, but however, one thing you need to know if you're playing a sniper or a long range support robot, usually you don't end up first place, okay? I, uh, I ended up second place in terms of damage, but I only scored one kill somehow. Huh? Because, yeah, because I'm a supporter. I'm not an assassin. I support from long range and I make sure my team is able to advance forward. 
Um, and this guy here, he was probably running something like the Cerberus very effectively, a strong brawler that can do more damage and get more kills, right? So, um, yeah, this is my, uh, my skill training with money video, 20 tips and tricks. Hopefully you guys appreciate it and, and li like it. Uh, tell me in the comments if you do, or even if you don't, tell me what I could do better next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe. It's already long enough. So, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.